First order of business, I'm not sure how you pronounce Vita. I just go with Vita because it sounds good, but I do have that, you know, weird feeling it's not exactly how it's supposed to be, be pronounced. Nevertheless, I will go this way, Vita. Topic of today's presentation demo is how we can make our apps faster, better, harder, stronger with the lovely, lovely marriage of Vita and SPFX, and we'll bind that uh, with, with uh, Rush stack because it's extremely, extremely useful. Quick recap. Oh, wait. Who am I? My name is Marcin. Uh, I'm working as a competence center leader in Avenga. You can find me on LinkedIn. I blog from time to time. Here is the link. My GitHub, uh, my profile on Twitter or X. Sorry. Uh, and once again, shout out to Brian, who actually reached out to me. Uh, he found my repo somewhere uh, on my on my repository, and he uh, he convinced me to actually give this this uh, lovely presentation. So Brian, shout out to you. Thank you very much. Having said that, quick recap, because last time we've seen each other, it was two weeks ago, quite some, quite many hours, I would say. So what was the statement and the problem that uh, I, I identified? SPFX is absolutely amazing, bunkers. It has only few small issues. First of all, build time. If we have a build time of a few minutes, as you can see on the attached screenshot, it can be troublesome to you know, keep that nice, crisp, fast uh, feedback loop for the development. You want to change something, see the change, it works, yes, no, maybe. You want that to be fast. This is why, unfortunately, SharePoint framework uh, falls a bit short. Next thing is reusability. Uh, usually, when we do SPFX, we rely very heavily on uh, this dot context, this dot context dot SPHTP client, or on service scope. So we rely very, very heavily on objects provided by SPFX. Great that it's provided. I'm not the biggest fan of relying on it uh, too heavily because it's difficult to get your solution out of SPFX and put it somewhere else if it's needed. So reusability, SPF context, service scope, and finally testability. Uh, if you know me, I am a little bit, I believe there are only two solutions to every issue with uh, IT project. Either you have to improve communication or you have to write unit tests. There is nothing else that can go wrong with IT project according to me, communication or unit, or unit testing. Uh, strong statement, I know. However, if you ever tried write, uh, writing unit tests for uh, solutions in SPFX, it is quite troublesome. It took me uh, a while to understand the whole stack, to actually be able to mock and write some unit tests. And yet, as I mentioned before, uh, I hope, uh, I believe it's extremely, extremely useful. So what's the solution? The solution is following. We create simple app with Vita, because now it's the next big, great thing, better than React Create App or whatever else. And this is correct. If you ever worked with uh, Vita before, the feedback loop is extremely fast. The hot reload is absolutely amazing. Uh, great developer experience all the way through. All the, on top of that, when you are building just Vita app or the React app with uh, Vita, you can ask just about Vita stuff, not exactly as per uh, SPFX related stuff. So it's easier to find solutions to the problem you are having. Uh, next thing is you have full control over interfaces that you depend on in your application. It is a very good approach to be prepared for whatever SharePoint framework will provide us with our interfaces but we can be a little bit more abstract. This is very good. In my opinion, it's especially nice with HTTP client because I'm sick and tired of always using sphttpclient.configuration.v1. 
uh, I don't like typing that very much. By the way, because I see I have quite some time, if you would have any questions, don't hesitate to put it in chat. I will answer it, or at least I will try. Uh, so that's it. That's a quick recap, and I promised you today we will go deep into the details how we can actually do this um, and how we can uh, accomplish this, this lovely, lovely thing. So without any further ado, demo time. And let's start with our VITE project. And as you can see here, is very simple to react up. Now, the critical, crucial thing to prepare it for uh, being able to import that uh, to, to SPFX is to understand what we actually have to abstract around. And two, or actually the first most important part that uh, SPFX is providing us is authentication, in particular authentication to SharePoint, authentication to Graph, and that lovely, lovely, lovely thing, which is AAD uh, HTTP client provider, which can give us uh, a pre-authenticated client to provide the resource. So the authentication single sign-on in, in, uh, in SharePoint is critical. So as you can see, I start by defining authentication context provider. Uh, Oh, Jean, very familiar. Lovely. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we are starting with authentication context. And we will, in our simple React app, we will uh, use Missal authentication service to actually authenticate to our tenant, uh, to our tenant with our client ID. What uh, authentication context actually provides? is that lovely, lovely global hook, which is use authentication. Use authentication will provide us with authentication provider. This, and this is important thing, you can see it's get access token by resource. And this is very similar to what, uh, to what token provider in SPFX provides us with. It's the, the same signature, the AAD authentication token provider in SharePoint framework has the same signature. This is not by uh, not by by mistake, not by accident. We want to keep uh, keep the, the signature very similar. Thanks to this, everywhere within our application, let's go back here. Everywhere here, we can actually use our authentication provider to authenticate to different resources. Bear in mind, at th at this point, we are using just Msal to authentication. So it's our own app. And now if you want to extend it, for example, with that new lovely nested authentication flow, it's quite easy to adapt. You don't have to change anything else but our authentication service. Lovely idea. So we change our, uh, the, the way we authenticate from standard install code flow to nested, uh, nested, authent sorry, nested app authentication. And it's only changed in the dependency of, of uh, authentication context provider. Let's jump a little bit deeper because we are interested, for example, in how we will connect to graph. And our graph context provider, which also exposes user graph hook, uh, just creates the, here I'm using batch graph uh, HTTP client, but it's using out authentication provider from our use authentication hook. Similar, we will do with Dataverse context because our sample will evolve around, uh, around Dataverse. We are using the same authentication provider. We are just creating new authenticated uh, client for Dataverse based on our Dataverse resource. If you are not familiar with, with uh, consuming Dataverse API from anywhere. You are just registering your Entra ID app. You are saying that you want to consume uh, dynamic CRM, and in your make power, uh, powerapps.com, you are finding the uh, environment URI. You are using that as your uh, resource URI right key. So thanks to that, we are effectively authenticated to Dataverse from our custom app. And you may ask, Martin, sounds good. How does it look like? 
Let me show you. This is how it looks like. And you know what you would say. Martin, it's not pretty. Not the point. Uh, I'm not a designer. I'm not very good at making things pretty, uh, except my ego. But bottom line is we do have our uh, integration with, with uh, Dataverse. We are actually, maybe I can even show you that the network tab will refresh some things. You can see the authentication is executed. We are calling uh, Dataverse API to get who am I. That's my user ID, lovely. And now I'm filtering tasks right here in my uh, from the tasks table, tasks assigned to me. Lovely. Very nice. We can do that because I registered the specific application in Entra ID and I consented in my uh, development tenant to that application so it can consume uh, that particular resource. Any questions regarding this part? Lovely. So now let's ask ourselves, Marci, this is very good. This is very nice. The development is fast because let's say I would like to change very quickly that about stars. Oh, that's not it. Sorry. Right here. We would like to change something about how it looks like. For example, our task list should have bigger gap. It's done. It is relatively fast. <coughs> oh, pardon. Having said that, we we can see that the hot reload really helps uh, quite a bit. Also, as I mentioned before, it also simplifies testing a little bit because if you want to write unit tests, you don't have to worry about mocking SharePoint uh, related content or SharePoint related dependencies. Thanks to this, you can have some lovely, lovely unit tests like here. I will not go too deep into unit testing. I just hope you will try it, have fun. Uh, exactly, very nice. But now how we can put this simple small app and put it in SPFX. So in theory, you can prepare your own uh, library, build, have very, if you have very deep knowledge in the whole, no, whole node stack and you understand the bundles, all of that magic, feel free to go and do it yourself. I'm going, or I'm choosing a bit of a shortcut because Microsoft already prepared something absolutely amazing, which is the Gulp file for building SharePoint uh, SPFX projects. And what I'm doing here is I'm effectively uh, installing as a dependency but Microsoft SP Build Web, and I'm running a uh, good build using that particular task. Thanks to this, I know that whatever will be the format or the output of my build, uh, of my build, it will be the same format as Microsoft expects in SPFX. In our case, as you can see, it build me lovely, <coughs> lovely, lovely thing, and. It's in the same format uh, as, uh, as, as SPFX expects it. Now I'm just trying npm link, and thanks to that, in my local npm repository, I will have this package available. Now let's switch to our SPFX project. Simple SPFX project, and let's start with our uh, entry point, which is uh, Dataverse web part or database tasks web part. Here I have hard coded the database uh, URI because the amount of weird and different places you would prefer this to be stored is uh, too much for me to handle. So I went for the simplest thing. I'm sorry. Uh, hope you will uh, know how to update it to, to your needs and where to put it in your configuration stack. But what we are doing? Here on init, we are defining our token provider. As I mentioned before, we are uh, getting our token provider for AED token provider factor, which is provided by context. This token provider has effectively, as you can see, the same, uh, the, the same signature as the interface we, do, we defined 
in our root project. Thanks to that, when we are creating our authentication context provider, we are actually providing the token provider from uh, SPFX context. Thanks to that, we are getting that, that single sign-on. We are getting that lovely, lovely uh, authentication mechanism directly from Microsoft in this case. Once we create authentication context, we're also creating graph context and our dataverse context. Once we have all of these, we are actually, as with every other, uh, other web part, just rendering the context provider, which, as you can see, cascades down with children to our element, which is dataverse tasks. If you go to definition, you can see we have that tasks list from our linked library, I mean NPM linked library. If you go here, hit F12, you can see it's actually um, pointing to my uh, local NPM uh, repository, which you can uh, play around with using NPM link. Of course, you can also publish uh, your package to NPM.js. Have fun, you can publish it to your uh, private uh, artifacts in your Azure DevOps, also very, uh, very valid point. And as you can see, I'm just consuming the tasks list from my library in my uh, SPFX project. You may say, does it actually work? Yes, because as you can see, uh, uh, running my debug mode, I have the same list, I have the same experience, I'm, I'm having right here the on, or maybe I would zoom in here as well. The only difference is actually in authentication. Because, and maybe we can also show it right here, if we will refresh, we get the client component. And as you can see, there is no this authentication query because it's already somewhere cached by um, Microsoft uh, SPFX framework. We are just getting, where was it? Or maybe that's this token, not the Microsoft. Oh, I don't care, I don't have to care because Microsoft is uh, doing that for me. The important thing is that I'm also calling that who am I endpoint and that tasks endpoint the same way I'm calling that with um, a simple beta. Uh, up. Does it make sense? Yes, no. No one knows. Yes. It does. Lovely. Great. So, uh, why don't you, why I would suggest you to uh, go out and try this approach? First of all, uh, at least in my experience, very often uh, web parts we are building grow to a whole application on, on their own, especially if, uh, if we are somehow touching not only SharePoint lists or the SharePoint document library, but also something in graphs, something in dataverse. It grows quite big and at some point someone asks us, you know what, actually can we, for example, put it in a separate app or make it a mobile app. And with that approach, it's relatively simple because we're just publishing this one to static web app. We are configuring it to be progressive web app and you have separate app and mobile app for free. Quite nice. Let's say Microsoft <coughs> will introduce new way of hosting web parts uh, or maybe new type of extensibility like now we have uh, we have web parts we have uh, aces we have uh, application extensions if anything new pops up we can also import all our app and adjust it to our new entry point you want a new uh, dedicated teams personal app now with nested uh, app authentication you can all uh, you, you can also publish this, use the setup authentication and have single sign-on with your um, setup authentication for your Teams personal app. Very nice, it will perform significantly better than doing that through Teams login page.